Joshua Graham said, quote, I survived because the fire inside me burned brighter than the fire outside, unquote. We know that there have been substantial changes in the past few years owing to the pandemic. We also have to understand that how our life varies on such difficult timescales and the impact of challenging atmosphere. What I have understood from the theme, Changing Current, is that how, as an individual, I can keep my viscosity intact even when multiple negative forces are applied on me. How I can survive, sustain, burn, fight and yet rise again from the ashes. In such times, we have to become like wet sand. You know, when you pick up a handful of wet sand, it becomes firm. And some of it will flow between your fingers, pushing apart the tiny grains. Similarly, we have to become firm from our within, absorb all the constantly occurring turbulences and push apart the negativity, cynicism, pessimism that life has to offer. I may be representing myself today as an arts ambassador, cultural ambassador of India, but I am a broken pottery myself, only mended with gold and silver to fill the cracks. Now, when you fill your broken cells with gold and silver, you start seeing aesthetics and start appreciating beauty in incompleteness. I started learning Kathak, which is one of the eight classical dance forms of India, at a very young age of four. I would dance for hours and hours in front of the television on random Bollywood songs and uh, my parents saw that, they gauged the knack in me and uh, then they decided to put me into dancing. We lived in Singroli, a very small town in Madhya Pradesh where uh, I was born. And uh, we came to Delhi for my cousin sister's wedding. It is then that we met uh, legendary Kathak exponent Guru Srimati Gitanjali Lal. We visited her class and I was awestruck by that whole image where, you know, dancers were dancing rigorously, you know, uh, sweating and uh, the sound of different instruments, sarangi, tabla, pakhavaj, sound of the ankle bells, the ghungrus of footwork. And that whole atmosphere was absolutely magical. I, I mean, uh, I can still visualize that. It is still very fresh in my memory. My mom decided, uh, my mom asked uh, Gitanjali ji that if I can uh, uh, train under her. But because we lived in a very, diff very far away state, it was difficult for us to, you know, do that. But my parents were so headstrong that uh, they decided to bring me to Delhi every six months for good 10 to 15 days and uh, that is how my training started. I would come to Delhi every six months for 10-15 days, learn under the tutelage of my guru and then go back and then practice uh, whatever lessons I have learned and then come back again. This went on for good six to seven years until we finally shifted to Delhi so that I get a better education in dance. Now, as a professional dancer, my journey may seem very easy, may sound very easy, but it was not. Even though I had encouraging parents, but my peers were not supportive. My relatives, they were not supportive. I was constantly bullied and I was called with different names like Nachnevala, Nachnevali, Nachaniya and all sorts of derogatory words that would break me into pieces. I would come home, cry and tell my parents that this is not something I want to learn. But never told them the reason behind my hatred for it. I became very reserved as a person. I then used to think that is there any prerequisite condition to fall under a specific gender identity to exhibit dance or is it the art of the body and soul that exemplifies it? You know, male dancers have been seen outlandishly in the society because it has been considered for most of the part as a feminine style and it has been difficult for male dancers to grapple with such societal barbs and stereotypes. What I have understood is Maybe 
it's the lack of knowledge lack of education lack of awareness lack of exposure in the society now look back in the history you will see that the earliest dancers dance scholars dance critics historians they were all men who have nurtured it whether it is gopi krishna ji or uday shankar ji uh, it was always men who have left the first impressions they were the india's answer to rudolf nuraev or eric brown of the west society is very ignorant also towards it because we have considered arts music dance as extra curricular activity and not part of the main curriculum and we know that the foundations laid in the primitive years of our childhood is very important and that makes us you know when i visit uh, rural areas and uh, villages to teach dance to the underprivileged kids i have realized that how naive how innocent how unaware these kids are but equally loving and accepting because they love it you know they love what they see when i teach them it is only in the urban areas that such discrimination lies and we in the urban we call ourselves to be educated you know in the society people will often ask me what utility is there in arts when i say that i am a dancer they will ask me what else do you do apart from dancing because <laughs> because for them it's non utilitarian these art forms whether it is singing dancing pottery painting because it can't be reduced into a commodity and it's difficult to survive when you opt for career options like these in the countries where people become money minded art starts disappearing leo tolstoy rightly said quote we often believe that the greatest force existent in the world is the material force but the artistic force that makes us spiritual is insignificant to us however it is that there the true force resides that modifies our life and the life of others unquote and rightly so because when on the one side i was being constantly bullied and i was listening to these kind of remarks and loathing on the other side i was encouraged by my parents by my guru by my school teachers they would often tell me to participate in school competitions in functions and it is then that i realized that i am doing something very different i would repress i would be the only boy dancing in those competitions in those functions and that made me stand out from the crowd i started realizing that this is something very different from the crowd from the herd out of box that i'm doing and slowly that gave me confidence and slowly i started feeling proud of what i was doing i started changing as a person i became more empathetic more um i started resonating more to people to nature to animals i started uh, loving the sunrise sunset uh, birds chirping river flowing the trees the flower blooming and it is then that i realized that how our mean and rude world asks us to rejoice the ego of individuality individuality whereas we must rejoice the ego the uh, we must rejoice the bliss of infinity isn't it and you know these are the soft skills that make us more humane we lack back indian classical dance lacks back to the image of lord nataraja lord shiva who is the embodiment of masculinity and femininity but why are we constantly seen through the prism of gender sex and queer studies there has to be a masculinity and femininity in all of us only then there'll be an equilibrium you know dance has taught me the harmonious blend of inner silence and outer celebration and also outer silence and inner celebration
you know these struggles these remarks these uh, constant hurdles that come our way acts as a sword the sword will cut us into two only then the two will meet through these conflicts we will rise as a person we will become a better person through struggle contouring will happen through war peace will flower and these hurdles are equally important these challenges are equally important and in our life they make us they make us a better person they give us more power to fight back they give us the strength the stability in our life and uh, you know um as a professional dancer i still find challenges there are still so many problems that come my way in an era of multinational imprints power suits private jets i'm still struggling to find a place for myself here but thanks to the reality shows the dance performances the cinema the digital era instagram that we have got a lot of opportunities we are getting a lot of opportunities and we are getting some sort of spotlight limelight i really hope and pray that all of us have the courage to pursue whatever career options we want in our life without having to sacrifice without having to compromise there is a saying that time changes people but i really hope that may you be the one that change the time thank you